So let's give it a lash. Yeah, let's do this. All right, we're going to do this on a daily basis. So uh, to speak for myself, I'm a little mm -hmm. bit nervous, so bear with us. We try to do our best, but uh, yeah, let's see how this works out for us. We're going to tell a little bit about our Agile journey at Hof Humantis, first of all. Just for, uh, for a clarification, uh, Hof Humantis is a sister company of Hof Lexware, which is this company here. So, okay. So, you can see that we're not doing this on a day. Okay. So, um, in St. Gallen, in Switzerland, and in Barcelona, in Spain. Yeah, John is an Agile coach in Barcelona. He's also IC geek. He's originally from Ireland. Real Irish ironist, that. John, that's you. He's a really fun guy. He's a great Agile coach. And he takes care of yeah, people there. And he's also a trap music freak. Right? Uh, emphasis on freak. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Tom is. Agile nerd, he's uh, very much embedded in the whole Agile uh, mindset and the uh, philosophies. He's based in St. Gallen in Switzerland, but originally from the Netherlands. And the reason he moved from the mountainous uh, lands of the Netherlands down to <laughs> flat uh, Switzerland was because he's a mountain maniac. Yeah, that's a true story. So. True story. <laughs> company. <laughs> He hated being in the mountains, which is why he left um, uh, the Netherlands. Exactly. Yeah. All right. John, you want to share a little bit about uh, what we're doing at Humantis? Okay. So, uh, in Humantis, we basically um, ha uh, do talent management systems, uh, recruitment and uh, um, enhancement and uh, person building and all the systems around that. Mm -hmm. um, we basically existed since 2000. And we've had uh, basically a very successful talent attraction system. And a couple of years ago, we started on a journey to create a system for the 21st century for the new model for how we do uh, talent attraction, how we do uh, personal enhancement. I'm trying to stay away from uh, HR because HR is a very 20th century concept <laughs> and we basically we're not really interested in HR as such it's more about uh, organizational development people development get, uh, helping people actualize and be the best that they can within the, the organization and basically developing themselves and giving them opportunities to develop themselves rather than being a resource to be used by the company <laughs> Yeah, so we're trying to rebuild our current stack or replace it more or less with a completely new software suit with a lot of teams. And this brought some challenges. Uh, yeah, our agile journey, our agile roller coaster, maybe better mm -hmm. pronunciation of it. Ro so roller coaster is a good one. Yeah, <laughs> this is what it's about because it was not a straight line and it's still not a straight line. And we want to share some experience what we uh, learned so far. Yeah, it was more like this with lots of question marks and ideas and things that we've tried, things that worked. There should be a few explicit deletions on there as well, but we, we cleaned it up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, 20th century mainframe programmer, which is basically what I am. I basically worked in, uh, in computer systems for 30 something years. I started off as a programmer, systems programmer on mainframes, Unix systems, uh, OS2 systems you probably never heard of. Um, I, I got a shock lately uh, when uh, one of the guys in uh, Barcelona referred to C as a low level programming language. I mean, to me, C is a high level language. And, I mean, and that's not a joke, that's true. I mean, I still think of C as a high level language because when I started, that's what it was. So that's still the way I think. So basically, back in the day when I got into this game, your, your mainframe programmer, your systems programmer, was this ancient being with terrible powers who basically you stayed away from or you worshipped and adored, <laughs> depending on your point of view. Mm -hmm. The world's moved on a bit and people like me are historical, shall we say. <laughs> uh, the, the, nowadays, basically, we talk microservices, we talk web services, we talk AWS. It's all basically higher level languages a lot more adaptable, a lot more uh, lean, 
as you can see, and uh, subtle and active. So it's a completely different mindset. <clears throat> and of course, when you actually uh, start in that situation where you've got um, two systems, you've got an existing system with all of your existing customers are using, mm -hmm. and you've got a new system which you're starting to build, and you're doing it in Barcelona and St. Gallen, you're doing it in Sarajevo, you're doing it here, here Timisoara. In, uh, in Timisoara. You've got a lot of teams, and uh, we have an expression in English which is basically herding cats. Anyone who has a cat knows what that means, you know how difficult that is. And this is basically the road sign of how easy it is to organize all those things. So. Yeah, and we had all these teams working on this new product for us, and we were also, yeah, we were time constraints, we had some deadlines there, and uh, we were pushing stuff on these teams, so we were actually uh, utilizing them a lot, and the flow wasn't really working, so we didn't produce that much at the end. And of course, one little accident, all you need is basically one blown tire, and this whole system grinds to a halt. Yeah. 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 So we had to make some choices. We had to say, where are we going to go? Yeah. What route are we going to take? How are we going to move forward from this and make sure that we basically, that we ourselves are fit for a process for the next 20 or 30 years of the company? How are we going to actually move this forward? So we did some investigations. Yeah, I remember that. that yes. Was, that was <laughs> yes. So basically, you want to take this one? Yeah, so yeah, what we did, we had a lot of team working on the same product, and uh, yeah, one team, uh, it, it's maybe not easy, but it's, it should be doable. Uh, borrowed some slides from uh, Hendrik Nieberg, uh, by the way, for this. Uh, having three teams, uh, or more even, or, um, nine or ten now, uh, working together on, uh, on one product, that's already a bit trickier. So, and also the question is, how do you get these teams? How do you form these teams? How do you get the right teams? Right teams. Uh, so we did first a uh, self-selection team design session, and I want to share some footage of this with all of you. How that worked out? We gamified it, and uh, yeah, it was actually sound. We have sound. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So okay. From there, yeah, we had these teams, 
And um, but still, we were in a quite a complex uh, environment with a lot of uh, partners, suppliers, customers, demands, uh, co-creation customers, and so on. So, uh, yeah, we wanted to avoid this uh, this kind of uh, things. What I refer to as chaos span. It's where you're trying to work things in a Kanban way, but in fact, what you're doing is you're fighting fire all the time. So this, this cross-team uh, collaboration and cross-team uh, communication and alignment and those kind of things, but this, this was more or less what was happening at a certain point, where we're not building a tunnel and bridge, but as a metaphor, we're not into tunnel and bridge business as far as I know, right? Well, not this week. If, if things don't work out, we, we might all be looking for jobs digging tunnels. <laughs> Especially in, especially in Switzerland, there's lots of opportunities. <coughs> and also there's lots of trees as well, so we might get a chance to actually test this theory as well. No, this is yeah. this this actually what we're doing. We're really working really hard. Yeah. And uh, this is again to this 100% this uh, uh, utilization of, uh, of our resources. If, if, you, if you're not taking time to actually experiment, then you're <laughs> never going to find out how to do things better. And you're always just going to end up it with this instead of this. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to deliver some yeah. useful, valuable products. So we thought, okay, how can we improve this collaboration? How can we uh, uh, yeah, make things more transparent as well? Because these were not know what they were working on, uh, what other people were working on. So we thought okay, we should come up with some simple program backlog where the teams can pull their stuff off. Uh, it's prioritized and. Uh, yeah, they can work on it, we make it really transparent and so everybody's aware in the company. And they can all talk to each other and the people know what other teams are working on things that align with what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. So we started uh, again, yeah, this is There's a bit more investigation. This is the second investigation. Yeah. So, yeah, we, John and I, we love frameworks. We love frameworks. <laughs> yeah, we love frameworks. So we started looking at frameworks. For instance, this one, we might have seen it before. Yeah. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. We 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 found it a little <coughs> intense, shall yeah. we say? Well, it said safe, and we were looking for some safety at that time, so uh, yeah. it should be good. Yeah, and, and the, the problem is, at the time, we had less safety, so it wasn't really that really really good. Sorry, that that's a, that's a little bit of abuse for the man sitting here in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> No, but we decided after looking to a lot of things, okay, there must be some useful stuff in there. So we decided to, to look at it as a toolbox and yeah. see, hey, are there any tools we could use? And we don't have to reinvent this wheel again completely from start. So are there some tools that we could use? So we started yeah, sketching a little bit, thinking, okay, how could this work together? How could pieces fall together? So basically what we got, sorry, Tom, could cross you. We uh, took the idea of um, release trains, uh, or at least the concept of teams grabbing, uh, <coughs> in, working in parallel and grabbing from a product backlog. We grabbed that from SAFE. We looked at uh, Agile Guilds, for, uh, which we took from Spotify. Mm -hmm. We even went from, with, to talk to Less and grab some feature teams. Mm -hmm. And we looked at yeah. what we could do to put things together in a way that would work for us. Yeah. given the complexity of the organization and the complexity of our distributed teams, what could we do that could actually be something that would work? Yeah, and we tried to keep it as simple as possible. Just, okay, first of all, we thought, okay, we need to make some good decisions from a higher level, some planning decision, and we asked ourselves, okay, what would be really stupid not to build the next three months? So we just got it for three months there, and we prioritized this, and we come on board with it, a group of people, we call this the portfolio management team at that time, smart people from all from the whole company gathering together once a month in cadence and think, okay, what would be really stupid now to build? And then, okay, there was a prioritized list that was already good because we had, didn't have that before, we didn't know what we were working on, so there was already a start and then the teams could pull all these uh, yeah, business initiatives in. Sorry, just to, just to be clear on this, the portfolio management team uh, in, included people like the product owners. 
So they were talking to their customers, so they knew what the customers were looking for. Mm -hmm. So basically, they were in, among the people who were in the best position to actually say what had to be the priorities. So it wasn't that this was some set of gods on high who were making demands on the company. This was actually <coughs> involvement from the teams in the form of the product owners to actually help to actually prioritize what work we should be doing in the next number of months. So yeah. And yeah, we did some sketching, but this still looked uh, pretty ugly. We could not uh, explain it easily this way to the company. So we asked Jimmy, Jimmy John Lenn, who knows Jimmy? He does some facilitation uh, uh, things. He's uh, uh, as a coach currently at Spotify. He wrote some books about visualization facilitation. And we asked him, okay, can you draw this picture for us? <laughs> then he... It's a bit of an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> This is the MVP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, MVP. MVP, and yeah, we iterated a little bit on it. Yeah. So this was our first release, and we we invited the whole company, and we shared this, and we created some explanatory videos. So uh, we we explained it, and then there was a Q and A session. So people could get feedback, and everybody was more or less like, oh, yeah, why not? Let's let's give it a try, see how it works. And we were also like, yeah, why yeah. not? Yeah. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah, what's the worst? <laughs> <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> so, okay, uh, this was it. This was our, uh, yeah, how we started. There was one uh, new big event added, and it was the, the PI planning program increment, which was like uh, five sprints, one sprint for purely for innovation and preparation. <laughs> and this was our big room planning session. And uh, yeah, I was with all teams in one room and come up with a plan for the next uh, two and a half months at that time. Yeah. So, and this is some, uh, a video from the first one we did in Sargon. <coughs> Teams over there, Swiss Rocks, John Lane, Delegate, and so on. 
And the initiatives are on the most left side, the big chunks of work that we need to establish. They're all uh, color-coded stickies. So that makes it really easy to see uh, who's working on what, to relate it a little bit more. And uh, the, the red yarn is used for dependencies. So in a glimpse, you could see, OK, who's depending on what and where. It could be bottlenecks. And this is at the end of the day. Because we have two breakout sessions, and usually after the first breakout session you see a lot of red yarn and then we ask the teams, okay, work on this. Find each other and see how you can mitigate these dependencies. And then a lot of yarn is removed and that yeah, make sure that the teams can work, they can flow and uh, yeah, it's beneficial. Still things change, of course, during such a program increment, uh, but we also uh, track this a little bit. and. Uh, First PI, I think we did more or less like 70% of what was planned was also delivered at the end of the program increment. Which I think is uh, That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, pretty good. It's improving every program increment. Yeah. So, yeah, so of course the, the key to this is inspect and adapt. Um, as Flavius was saying earlier, it's the most important thing to do. So, as we've gone through this, every time we, we look at this, we, we're changing the model, we're enhancing the model, we, as you will see in the upcoming slides, we basically inspect and adapt. We started looking at what we did, we started adding in additional features like the gills, we basically uh, also started looking at uh, other things around the planning, as you will see, I don't want to get a, a preemptive. So this was basically 1.1, we introduced the gills here mm -hmm. to uh, from Spotify, so that the, the the team started, the members of the team started talking to each other. So the POs founded a guild, the QAs founded a guild, the front end developers, the back end developers, Scrum masters, all founded guilds started talking to each other. The case of the guild was that basically, like the PMB, the Portfolio Management Board, the, each guild has a backlog, but uh, the work that actually goes into, in, sorry, each build has a Kanban board, but they do not have a backlog. Sorry, I said I'm completely the wrong way around. <laughs> okay, let me start that again. Each guild basically gets a, a Kanban board, under which all the work that the guild thinks needs to be done goes onto that, and then they monitor it from there. The work itself, however, goes into the teams that basically are best suited to actually do the work. So the, the guild does not have a backlog. All it has is a board for monitoring these tasks. And the work goes into the, the teams that think that they are the people who should be doing it. Yeah, and also to avoid shared commitment in the team. So you can only commit on your sprint goal, your sprint, hey, this is what we're going to do together as a team. And uh, to avoid, like, oh, yeah, I also have to do this for the guild. No, you volunteer in your guild. Yeah, I could take care of that. I'll take, bring it to my team, and then we'll prioritize it. And uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, other commitments. And the other thing we did with this version was we um, brought in a lot more clarity on here value streams. So basically, <coughs> the color coding system. So color current products, the new systems that we were developing, and basically the business support, support systems. So although we had the colors before, they weren't particularly clear. So we basically brought these in as value streams to actually make it clearer to someone looking at the model exactly what it is the teams were delivering. And yeah. okay, this might look very process way of thinking, and that's true. So uh, <laughs> on the other side, we also uh, yeah thought a lot uh, into the teams about. Why are we doing these things? Why is cadence useful, for instance? Why is pool mechanisms uh, useful? Why do we want to have these long-lived and stable teams? Uh, all these kind of things. So it's not only about process, but also about values, principles, and those kind of uh, things. And we uh, yeah, iterated on it. Uh, yeah, we, uh, the co-creation summits we added. We have this in our in our uh, company a lot. Shall I mention uh, about co-creation? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Co-creation is a system we do with some of our key customers where basically we get together for three days and we um, discuss which features are those things that are uh, most important to them. So then what we do is we actually do a um, almost like a sprint analysis of the, uh, and the uh, almost like a design sprint where we basically come out with a set of prioritized features which have been analysed by all the, uh, the attendees and a, a set of 
spe specific requirements are actually drawn up and then they go basically into the, the portfolio Kanban board. So they come out of the co-creation as requirements. There's no guarantee they will be developed. They're like all features, they go onto the, the Kanban board to be prioritized and they may be rejected. But it allows us to actually get the customer's involvement, the people who actually we will want to deploy and use the software to actually be involved in the process of designing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We also added this version 1.2, the PI Pitch and Party, which is an event. Yes. And we have a question. Do you accept? Sure. sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw that at the portfolio level, you prioritize using wage shortage job first. Yeah. True. Sure. Maybe you can. Uh, say a couple of things about how that goes? <coughs> yeah, it's uh, like an algorithm to yeah, prioritize stuff. What you're actually doing there in the way that shortest job first, it's also an algorithm coming from SAIL, I think it's maybe it's used more. It's, what you do is the cost of delay divided by the size. And we're doing this with this portfolio management board team, and they're doing some relatively estimation of the cost of delay. Uh, and, the, and the size. And based on that, we have a really good guess about prioritization. So, in, in, we can in, do, uh, in, in, in the shortest <coughs> idea, it's basically um, when, when you look at things, the smallest jobs are the things that you could get done the quickest. However, they may not have the most value in terms of uh, customer satisfaction or financial gain. So, you basically balance the size of the job against the benefit. And that's basically what waited. The, the SJF means shortest journey first, in other words, the quickest thing to do. But you, but you weigh that against the benefit. So it's weighted shortest journey first. Sounds good. Yeah. Of yeah, maybe we can discuss a bit yeah. later because uh, I mean the cost of delay. That's the one that I'm most curious about. How you estimate that? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We also experiment with another prioritization method. Uh, Pandora. Pandora. Yeah. It didn't work out that good, but yeah. We're Okay, just a couple of other things on this uh, this particular screen. Uh, as Tom mentioned, the pitch and party is very important. It involves beer again. Uh, not that there's a theme here or anything. Uh, other things that we should mention. We brought in co-creation here in the fourth sprint. We also added a sixth sprint. And that was basically, uh, specifically so as to allow us to actually bring in the co-creation which occurs every three months and to align it with this activity. So basically by putting it in here and having two meetings of the program management board, we allowed the out output from the co-creation to actually feed into the, the, the next program management board. So, so we moved this to a six sprint to actually have that alignment, which gives us now a three month cycle. Yes, Ralph? What I always want to ask you in a safe session is, <clears throat> what if I just call it the splits in weeks? And the program increment the sprint and make it shorter with maximum of one month, then it would be spa. Yeah, why not? Right. Yeah, why not? Okay, so it just works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just works. <laughs> 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 you would be allowed to yeah. just, and uh, that's my second question, right? Yeah. You call it safe. Because it, it, it's a, just a mix. Yeah. And so all well, the brand new, yeah. you, you just choose the first thing with the baddest. I think. It's, 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 it's not just the mix, it's a very well balanced recipe for success. No, you yes. right. yeah. that, We don't know, it's just we try to find out, see how it works, and uh, we get the results uh, later. But we're always just for, for example, we were in Dublin and they carved out a pumpkin <laughs> to be really scary and it has a glowing safe on the face. <laughs> yeah. So maybe yeah. just call it differently, then yeah. it can be a, a more open mix. Yeah, yeah. 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 We regret that we started calling this safe at Humantis. Yeah. And we also discussed yeah. renaming it more to Agile at Humantis because we're using all kind of flavors. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we are thinking of renaming it Agile at Humantis. Um, yeah, I mean, safe basically, uh, it was easy for people talking to the customers to basically say, this is what we're doing when we started off. So, you know, it's like, oh yes, we're going to, we're going to do the safe. So the customers could go away on Wikipedia, what's safe? So, you know, whereas if we had to say, we're actually going to get a tool from here and a tool from there. We're going to put them all together and trust us, it'll be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not as easy for the customers to buy. That, that's understandable. 
The customer was like, dial up, oh, safe. Mm, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We, we have to look at our company. Where are we currently? How are we dealing? How is our whole ecosystem? Yeah. How, yeah, external, internal. But, but we also support uh, co creation instead of just attending a review. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. We like to stress it up a little bit. Sorry, I'll get, to your, I'll get to your question in one second. I just want to tell an Irish joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell an Irish joke very quick because it's, yeah, it's okay. important what Ralph is saying. Uh, there's an Irish joke where an American couple stop their car and get into uh, go, go to a farmer in the field and they say, we want to go to Tipperary. And the farmer looks at him and he goes, well, if I were you, I wouldn't start from here. <laughs> Which is well, well and good. It's like, if we were actually founding the company, we might have, have gone for a different uh, mix of tools. But basically, when we started, we had to we had to start from where we were. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, you had a question. Yes, um, I was wondering regarding the agile guilds. Uh, so, from my understanding, you would have uh, you know the QA gurus, the developer gurus, and so on. No, and everyone, not just everybody gurus. was yeah. a guru, yes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, how uh, did you manage? So to speak, little conflicts. For example, you had uh, I don't know these stories, and uh, one was really nice, and everybody wanted that user story, but maybe others didn't. Did you have this case? And if yes, how did they the, the, manage? Everybody could start a guild. Actually, they could self-organize and say, "Hey, does this make sense to start a guild?" Yeah, yeah, why not? Let's give it a try. Okay, good, good guild. And then they had to organize themselves also in finding someone who would facilitate, lead this, more or less. Oh, okay. So this is where the guild master uh, comes in place. And this is also, this or she is also responsible for taking care of these things. And, oh. uh, yeah, promoting self-organization, of course, and seeing, okay, how can we deal with this? And some guilds are yeah, delivering more than other guilds, but <coughs> how it goes. But without the guilds, you don't have the sprints, right? I mean, from the guilds, uh, then the user stories come yep, to come back to team. team one or two yep, or ten. Exactly. Uh -huh. okay. Thank you. Yeah, but this gives some conflict every now and then. Yeah, hey, again. <laughs> yeah. So self organizing. Yeah. 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 Then we moved on to version 1.3. This is the new, the latest version. We, we release every two months a new version based on the feedback we get from uh, the company, from everybody in the company. We have, uh, yeah, let's know what's not working, what can we remove, because we want to keep it as simple as possible. And then we thought, oh, maybe we should add some customers to it. They <laughs> help. So three, we put three, we thought three should be enough. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is the latest version. Uh, basically, what, what we did was we made the ideation level much more explicit. Um, uh, basically, we wanted to show them how basically co-creation on one side and other customers are <coughs> all feeding into the vision of the <coughs> new system. The new system we call it People OS because it's orientated towards the, the individuals within the organization. So it's an operating system for the people rather than for the management or the HR department. And uh, basically, so we wanted to show more clearly where this this mm -hmm. sat in the whole model of things. Mm -hmm. And that's basically the, the main change that we made on this version. And eight months ago, only eight months ago, we didn't have that vision. Yeah. We were thinking, yeah, we should do something in this area, but how does it look like? And now we can see, yeah, we're really progressing in the right direction. So now, now we have one customer live um, on AWS in the PeopleOS environment with five applications mm -hmm. actually running, developed on four sites. So we have done a hell of a lot of work. <laughs> How many users? Um, well, the large customer has got uh, 185,000 customers, but I think at the moment there's only like maybe 40,000 using it. You know, so not many. But it's not that for eight months. So we've now started with version 1.4 and we already have some ideas coming out of that. Again? Yeah, again. Ah! Okay. Okay, we're well, learning so far. Yeah, let's, maybe we're also running out of time, so we need to okay. Yeah, we move it right along. Okay. Two guys? Not every, uh, not every frame, framework is bad. You know, some frameworks have actually some good parts. Um, 
and you know, and even that at least, you know it's stable, because it's got a tree in the middle. <laughs> Not all frameworks are good. Some frameworks have flaws which you only discover under extreme circumstances. Okay? There's nothing wrong with setting up your own framework and basically taking bits and pieces from other systems. Every company is different, so their needs are going to be different. As long as you can logically justify what you're doing. You know, as long as there's a good reason for doing it, there's nothing wrong with it. Okay. Oh, contrary to what some people say. <laughs> okay. we're, we're always looking very good at okay, what can we remove, what's unnecessary at this point of time, because it's just working. Now yeah. we, we got this idea and now it's improved. Yes. And we're, we're trying to make that, those graphs you see, we're, make, we're trying to make Jimmy's job easier, so that every time he draws it, it's not going to be more and more work for him. But yeah. we're trying to take things out. Yeah, and if we can remove things, it's also cheaper yeah. for... Yeah. yeah. So, don't be afraid to change things. Inspect and adapt all the time. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid to remove things. Exactly. Step back and start again. Sometimes just say, okay, this isn't working, throw it away, start again. Yeah. Or, or tweak it, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe throw it away. You don't like to have to throw yeah. it away, just do it again. So, so some results after eight months only when we started with this, yeah, we're working more and more on the right stuff. Yeah. So we know what we're working on. We get things done, so <coughs> 21 business epics in the last program increment, and these business epics are really large chunks of work for the teams. Uh, we have improved transparency, and this is, this is really helpful also for the trust uh, across teams, but also within teams. Like, okay, yeah, that ownership, uh, it's, that team is working on that, it's really transparent, and that encourage others <coughs> building something together, something awesome here together, our people always, and everybody building, <coughs> everything is building a, a chunk of it, so that's... And everyone's engaged. Yeah. Well, almost everybody, to be honest. But yeah, yeah, there's a... Less reactive mode of working, less chaos, improves collaboration between teams, really helpful, still some work to do, but it's improving, and agility is spreading out to the rest of the company, and this is like a pool mechanism, again, where we are approached for instance, from sales, uh, our consultancy, hey, uh, okay, this is interesting stuff. Uh, is there something we could do? Or how is this? How could this be beneficial for us? And uh, yeah, some good stuff going on there as well. Now we're becoming a learning organization. You see this more and more everywhere in our organization. Where <coughs> we're not afraid to change things. It's not like hey, this is our model. This is how it should work right from the start. No, hey. Oh, this is something that's not working. Okay, what can we do? How can we improve this? So this is, uh, I think, uh, really good. I lately heard one of our managers say, "Sometimes we win, and sometimes we learn." Current <laughs> <laughs> challenges. Yeah, we need to improve uh, our metrics for further transparency. What to make really transparent how teams are doing, how they are feeling, and so on. Uh, the cross-team dependencies are still, uh, yeah. Yeah, still there. Still too much red wine at yeah. the end of each PI. Yeah, yeah. We, we want to focus on really more and more autonomy in, in the teams. Uh, this real teams, with teams in Barcelona, Sarajevo, here at Sangal, and working all on one product. This gives some challenges. And yeah, there's lack of guidance in tooling frameworks and technology, which slows us down currently. And this is also where the guilds come in, and we hope that this improves and that they find each other. And because currently everything could do, could build in their own preferred tool or technology framework, programming language. So, and it's easy to choose the path of least resistance. Least. Least resistance. Yes. Yes. All right. Go, go with the flow. Go for the easy choice, and we have to. Keep ensuring that we make sure people avoid that and actually go for the most <coughs> beneficial choice, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily the easiest one. Mm -hmm. All right, one graph to wrap it all up. Graph <laughs> 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 is always good in the slide. Yeah. <laughs>